<laughs> all right, all right. I said I was going to make a video today for my fellow traders in our Discord chat. So, first things first, uh, this video is brought to you by Ride the Bull Trading, but it is not sanctioned by Ride the Bull Trading, nor do they know I'm making this video. But I will uh, plug these, this group. Uh, it's a group I belong to. It's a bunch of uh, traders of all skill levels, of all experience levels. Uh, the experienced guys are trying to help the inexperienced guys. Uh, we're all, you know, somewhere on the scale, but we're all wanting to get better. We support each other. It's a positive place, and, uh, and we learn a lot from each other. Uh, so if you are a trader who's just looking for a community to belong to, that's my plug for Ride the Bull Trading. Um, you can find them a couple different ways. I will put a link down in the description uh, of this video so that you can find us. Uh, they do have a, a free trial period. Uh, it's not a very expensive group to belong to. I have certainly made way more money than it's ever cost me. Okay, enough of that. Today was a rough day in the market. We were hoping for a bounce and, and, a, and a retest of some highs. We didn't get it. Um, so I wanted to just talk about stop losses and, and entering trades in general. Uh, guys, this is something that even just several weeks ago I was really struggling with and then it's just like, I, I, I got it. And if you'll get it, you'll be good to go. You see it, if you're watching Prime's videos every week, he's talking about it and he's implying some things and I just want to break that piece down for you today. Number one, you do not enter a trade unless you have a firm entry point that makes sense. You have a price target in mind of where you want your investment to go and you know where your next stop loss should be. If you don't know those three things, don't take the trade. It is not good enough to say, well, the market's going up or the market's going down. You'll never be satisfied in that trade because how far up? Oh, they can go just a little more. It's going to go a little more. I just know it. Oh, it's going to go. Oh, sh wait. Oh, shit. Oh, oh, crap. I'm down. I'm down 40%. I'm down 70%. Oh, my God. What happened? Well, what happened was you didn't know when the ride was supposed to stop. So how are you supposed to know when to get off? My dad used to say, never offer a meal to a man who says he's not hungry because he doesn't know when to quit eating. He's right. So you've got to decide, okay, why Why do I like this trade? Oh, well, it, it's, it's you know, there's some high volume. It looks like we got a turnaround down here. I'm reading my chart. Now, if you just, you know, you heard something on the internet that makes you think, oh, well, you know, cruise lines are going to go up today. Well, okay, but you need to ask yourself, not, you know, not, not if I'm right, but what if I'm wrong? All right, what if I'm wrong? Everybody's afraid to be wrong. Well, if you're wrong, then when will you know you're wrong? And that's what a stop loss is, is, is it's telling you, you you might be wrong about this trade, okay? Rather than just hanging on and hoping, this is the part that people seem to not get, and I didn't get it either, but here's the deal. You can be right, and the stocks still go against you. Okay? And it may go against you more than you can tolerate. And this is what happens to a lot of us. We finally get out of the trade and we lose money. And then 30 minutes later, it rips. And for whatever reason, then we sit there and go, God, dang it, that son of a frick, I can't frick, I just, of course, the minute I get out. Well, the truth is, you got out, you didn't get out too early. You got in too soon. Okay, you didn't get out too soon, you got in too soon. And it went past your tolerance. So the thing is though, what we usually do is we get stopped out or we finally capitulate and we sell and then we just ball that, that trade up and we throw it in the garbage and we go looking for another one. Well, wait a minute, maybe you were right about the trade, but because you didn't have specific entries and specific price targets, you just got in at the wrong time. Well, go back to where the trade looked good and tell yourself, you know what? If it gets back to this point, I'm gonna get back in rather than riding it all the way down and going all the way back up just to break even. Get out and then wait to get back in. You miss the bottom of the V and you can actually still make some money because you limited your loss on the front side. So that's sort of the, the trick to it. So, well, Larry, where do you get this magic stop loss from? You, you get your stop loss from the last place that the stock showed support. 
wherever that would be on your daily, your hourly, your 15 minute, whatever chart you're looking on, wherever this stock had support. Sometimes these stop losses can be really tight, like a 20 or 30 cent drop and your play is invalidated, okay? But we don't want to admit it. But if you'll set it from the beginning, then you just put your stop loss in and you don't worry about it. Your emotions can't get control of you. You've already made your mind up. Let it play out. Let your play play out. All right, so now the thing is, it's not about, well, I can afford to lose 10% of my account, so I'll just set my stop loss 10% below where I put in. No, wrong, wrong. There's no empirical evidence that says that is the point where the stock uh, will go past a point of no return. That's where you go past your point of no return. That's not how you set up a, a viable stop loss. What you tell yourself is, okay, this stock has support 50 cents below where I'm at, all right? Now, how much can I afford to lose in the stock? I can lose $50, all right? Well, in that case, you can afford to buy 100 shares of that stock, and when it hits your stop loss, you will be out $50. Does that make sense? Not, well, I can afford to lose $200 because that's 10% of my $2,000 account, so I'll just hold on until I lose $200. No, 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 no. That's not what you do. You you say, okay, where will the stop loss bring me to a $200 loss? And that's how you size your position. Does that make sense? I'll, I'll give you another example so that you can get it. So let's say that you're in a $30 stock and you think it's going to turn and the last time it had support was at $29.80, all right? Well, you go, well, that's a really tight stop loss. That's only like 20 cents on a $30 stock. Yep, so it is. Here's the deal. I'd rather be immediately stopped out and not have to suffer through the, oh my God, what if it goes lower? What if it does this? What if it does that? I would way rather just be stopped out and just be out of the trade and say, well, okay, so if I can afford to lose $200 and I've got a 20 cent stop loss, then if I've got enough money, which I wouldn't in this case, because I've only got $2,000, right? You could actually put all $2,000 of your money into that stock. You'd only be able to buy what? 75 shares or something like that, 60 shares, let's see, 65 shares of the stock, all right? But here's the deal. If it goes to your stop loss, you'll only lose your $200 if that's what you have decided. Now, I will tell you, I am playing with a way tighter setup than that since I've been back in this thing. I go for 1% of my account. So if I have a $2,000 account, I'm only gonna risk $20 on this trade. So if it's got a 20 cent stop loss, I'm only buying 10 shares. That's that. I'm in it or I'm out. And I'm only gonna do it for what I can stand because 20 shares, at a 20% you know, stop loss, or, or 10 shares at a 20 cent stop loss is, is $20, or whatever how you want to, you know, do the math. I might be doing it wrong, but I think you get my point, is you look at your stop loss, and you multiply that into what you can afford to lose based on your risk tolerance, and that's how many shares you buy, all right? So then, you also have to have a price target. You have to know when to get the hell out of the trade, all right? So how do you figure that out? Well, you go look for the next place that the stock has resistance. Well, gee, Larry, this particular stock only has resistance at 40 cents higher. Well, if it's not worth it, if that's not a good enough reward for you, that's where I'm putting my first price target. So I've got a 20 cent stop loss, and I've got 10 shares, so I'm gonna lose, you know, I'm, I, I possibly can lose, or two, I got a, whatever it is, 200 shares, so I can possibly lose about $200 but I'm only gonna make $400, maybe that's not worth it for you. Then don't take the trade. Don't, don't get it and say, no, no, uh, I'm gonna mentally will it to, to make me $600 because the market doesn't give a damn about your needs. It doesn't care. It's gonna do what the market does and we've been doing this long enough to know that support and resistance are critical points in the daily life of a stock. You don't just get an extra 20 cents or an extra 60 cents out of the stock because you need it, because that's what you wanted, okay? If it, if it doesn't have a technically supported reason for being there, don't bet on it, because now you're gambling and you're not trading. It either hits your price target and you get out. 
and if you go, oh my God, and then if you get out and you made your, your $400 profit and it runs another dollar, well, okay, maybe you can scale out. Maybe you don't have to sell everything when it hits your price target. Maybe you sell enough to cover your $200 risk and you let the rest run, okay? How are you do a trailing stop loss? So now it's moved up and hit your price target, but you're thinking, hey, it's looking strong, the volume's good. Maybe this is gonna run to the next level of resistance. Okay, move your stop loss up, resistance becomes support, and then automate it and forget about it. Let it run to the next level. I think what we do though is we get in, we go, oh, well, it's gonna be a big day. And we set percentage goals. We say, well, I wanna make 10% on this trade, or I wanna make 50% on this trade. That is not the way professional traders set their risk and reward. They set it based on their stop loss, their account size, their tolerance for risk, and the next resistance level. That's what you've gotta be looking at. Now, pay attention. When Prime shows you his charts and you ask him about his setups, all you're listening for is, is it good or is it bad? But he's given you all of that information. He's given you the support. He's given you the next resistance. He's, he's basically saying, here's your entry. So you just have to pay attention uh, and listen to what, what he's telling you. Uh, I'm in the Discord all day long telling you, hey, if it doesn't get over $37, this is not a good play. Well, you know, but everybody in Wall Street bet said, I don't give a shit. I don't trade GameStop. I don't trade AMC. I'm not doing any of that stuff. I don't care. I don't care. There's not enough of them to get it. There's not enough of them to influence the market often enough for that to be a viable play for you. Okay, and just because it went up yesterday doesn't mean it's going up today. The chart, it will tell you. Okay, and don't be in such a rush. Let your candles close. See that the support is there. Okay, you might miss the first 15% of the run up, but if it's a 75% run up, what do you care? You knew you were right. It's a worry free trade. You try to get in ahead of the trend and you're scared of it. I don't really know. God, I hope it. Okay, okay, market, do your thing. Wrong, 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 wrong. I want to ride the coattails of the institutional traders in the trend that's already developed, not the one that might develop. That's gambling, okay? And, and, and that's, you know, I'm a day trader. I'm closing my positions about 4 o'clock and I'm moving on. So I'm not, I'm not necessarily looking for, you know, a 20x, a 30x, a 50x. But what I am looking to do is grow that account. I had a good day today. I made one bad trade. And I... Uh, TOS didn't do right because I didn't set my stop loss right and it didn't execute for me and ended up losing about $400 on the trade that I should have only lost $120 on, but I still ended up being up $600 for the day. That's a decent day's work considering I had to run a whole department with 60 people in it at the same time, took five meetings today, uh, was, was in meetings nonstop from one o'clock till four o'clock, which is the most critical time. But you know what? My trading was already done. I was already done and my automated sales and my automated stop losses took care of me. I didn't have to be there. So, food for thought. I don't always know what to play and I don't always know everything, but I think that some of you guys are ready to hear this today because your mental stop losses failed you because you got mentally weak when things started going bad. Um, I hope this helps. It's not, it's not, I'm not trying to lecture at you or fuss at you, but, uh, but I know the frustration because I've done it and I've lost money that way and then I've walked away from trades that turned around and made money, which only made it worse. So recapping, you gotta have an entry, you gotta have a stop loss, you gotta have a target, you gotta know how much you wanna lose, and you gotta compare that to your account size. Five things you gotta do for every trade. If you can't do those, don't take the trade. Just stay out, keep your money. All right, good luck, we'll see y'all tomorrow.